Today we have some major updates on the legal troubles surrounding Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX. First, we will cover Sam Bankman-Fried's first U.S. court appearance and guilty plea. After that, FTX is taking the Bohemian authorities to court over seized FTX funds. And finally, did Sam Bankman-Fried break his bail terms? A large money transfer could spell disaster for the former crypto mogul. Watch to the end to find out. SBF not guilty? Sam Bankman-Fried, the former CEO of the now-bankrupt crypto exchange, FTX, appeared in court on January 3, 2023, his first U.S. court appearance since his arrest last month. Bankman-Fried has pleaded not guilty to all eight charges against him, including wire fraud and campaign finance violations at his arraignment in a Manhattan courthouse on Tuesday. The judge in the case has set a target date for the trial to begin in early October, and the prosecution expects to complete its discovery within the coming weeks. This will include documents shared by FTX's bankruptcy attorneys, which will provide more insight into the case against Bankman-Fried. The judge also granted Bankman-Fried's request to seal the names of the additional co-signers who guaranteed his $250 million bail bond, though the media can't object to the redaction of those names until January 12th of 2023. Bankman-Fried's lawyers had argued that there were safety and privacy concerns with revealing the names of these co-signers. The prosecution has requested that Bankman-Fried be prohibited from accessing or transferring any assets tied to FTX or its affiliated entities, citing concerns over the movement of thousands of dollars worth of crypto into other wallets last week. More on that later. While the defense argued that Bankman-Fried had not been involved in these transactions and, in fact, had been cooperating with the prosecution, the judge ruled that he should not be able to access or transfer any FTX or Almeida-related funds. The prosecution also noted that while Bankman-Fried had tweeted that he was not involved in these transactions, he had tweeted false statements in the past. Bankman-Fried was arrested in the Bahamas last month at the request of federal prosecutors who accused him of misappropriating customer deposits and lying about the financial health of FTX. These allegations state that Bankman-Fried used customer funds to pay for the expenses and debts of FTX sister company Almeida Research, while also misleading investors and lenders about the financial health of FTX. This case is sure to have significant implications for the crypto industry and for Bankman-Fried personally. If found guilty on all charges, he could face significant prison time and financial penalties. What do you think will be the outcome of this case? And how do you think it will impact the crypto industry? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. FTX's legal trouble continues. FTX and the Securities Commission of the Bahamas, or SCB, are engaged in an ongoing legal battle that has recently escalated, with both sides making accusations against each other. At the center of this dispute is the former CEO of FTX, Sam Bankman-Fried, who is facing fraud charges in the United States after being extradited from the Bahamas and released on bail. The main issue at stake is access to FTX's internal systems, including internal Slack messages and QuickBooks accounting software. The SCB has seized more than $3.5 billion in cryptocurrencies from FTX digital markets, which it is holding for future payments to consumers and other creditors. However, FTX's new CEO, John J. Ray III, disputes these estimations and claims that the value of the digital assets confiscated in November was only worth $296 million in FTT tokens, not $3.5 billion. FTX has accused the SCB and liquidators of colluding with the former CEO and co-founder Gary Wang in the transfer of digital assets. The SCB has denied these allegations and accused FTX of making material misstatements and basing their claims on incomplete information. Both sides have accused the other of having a cavalier attitude towards the truth and being reckless in the extreme. The Bohemian government has even hired the law firm of Brown Rudnick LLP to handle communications with media outlets and government agencies in the U.S. Brown Rudnick LLP represented Johnny Depp in the highly publicized trial against Amber Heard that took place last year. Amidst the ongoing legal battle, it has been reported that Bankman Fried may have violated the terms of his house arrest by cashing out a significant amount of money. We will provide further updates on this development in the next story. This legal battle between FTX and the SCB shows no signs of slowing down and the outcome will have significant implications for FTX and could potentially set a precedent for future legal battles in the crypto industry. Who do you think has the upper hand in this legal battle? Let us know in the comments. 
Welcome to Crypto Inquiry, where we bring you the latest crypto news to keep you informed on important topics and changes. Nothing is meant as financial advice, and as always, do your own research. SBF moving money. Again. FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried, also known as SBF, has allegedly cashed out a significant amount of cryptocurrency while under house arrest, according to an on-chain investigation by decentralized finance DeFi analyst Bo Tai Iguana. The investigation suggests that SBF may have violated the terms of his release, which stipulate that he is not allowed to spend more than $1,000 without permission from the court. On December 29th, Bowtie Iguana took to Twitter to report on a series of obfuscated wallet transactions that were allegedly linked to SBF. According to the DeFi analyst, Sam Bankman-Fried's public address sent all remaining Ether to a newly created address on December 28th. This address, which was originally owned by SushiSwap creator Chef Nomi in August 2020, then received transfers totaling $367,000 from 32 addresses identified as Almeida Research wallets, as well as an additional $322,000 from other wallets. All of the funds were reportedly sent to a centralized crypto exchange in Seychelles and to the crypto bridge, Renbridge. In addition to these transactions, Bowtie and Iguana identified five separate transactions of less than 51 Ethereum, about $61,000, that were used to move funds to newly created wallets and then onwards to a Seychelles-based exchange. The Sam Bankman-Fried linked wallet also sent three tranches of 200,000 Tether or USDT to the fixed float exchange. It is worth noting that these transactions do not necessarily mean that SBF has violated the terms of his release. Some industry observers have suggested that these assets were already his and do not qualify as spending money. There has also been speculation that SBF could be the anonymous co-founder of SushiSwap, Chef Nomi. However, SBF denied any involvement in building SushiSwap in September of 2020. Regardless of whether or not the transactions are confirmed to be related to Sam Bankman-Fried, they have raised concerns among some industry experts. As the Ethereum blockchain is an immutable public ledger, the on-chain evidence is permanently available to law enforcement and the courts. Bowtie Iguana has called on attorneys from the United States Securities and Exchange Commission to investigate the issue. The news of the alleged transactions comes soon after the government of Bahamas officially announced that it had seized $3.5 billion worth of crypto from FTX on November 12th. The authorities claimed that the action was taken in order to avoid a risk of imminent dissipation of funds after SBF warned about cyber attacks on FTX in mid-November. SBF was granted bail with a $250 million bond secured by his parents' equity in their house around a week before the alleged transactions took place. He had previously claimed that he only had $100,000 in his bank account after the collapse of FTX. Do you believe SBF violated his bail terms? What about the idea that SBF was part of the start of SushiSwap? If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and check out the video on the screen. See you next time.